All right, welcome to the deep end of the nerd pool. Um, so, so we are going to get a little bit heavy on, uh, on scraping here. So, um, so this is the SEO's Guide to Scraping Everything. I am Epi Voigt. Uh, I work for a company called JPL in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And uh, let's scrape everything that we can in eight minutes. So uh, I'm going to do this by giving you some use cases. And uh, we're going to take a look then how we can actually implement that with some XPath queries. And then I'm going to give you some extended use cases for how you can be awesome at your job using this stuff. Okay? So use case one is if we want to find out if a site, uh, site X in this case, um, very high domain authority, links to any page on my personal site, epi.net, right? So to do that, we're going to need to scrape partial matches using XPath's contains function. So Annie mentioned that. She got a little, a little further in the deep end than I thought she was going to, right? Now, the keys here are that we know that this link is going to contain epi.net, right? Because that's my domain. We also know that some people like to hurt the internet by capitalizing URLs in weird places when they link to us. So we need to take that into consideration. And then the final thing that we need to worry about in this case to make sure that we get the right information is that people don't care about domain canonicalization like we might, okay? So they might use a www or not put it on there for us, right? But either way, if they're linking to us, we want to be able to find that, okay? So do you link to me? This is the XPath query that will tell us that. And what this says, the two bars means, uh, the two forward slashes means find any A tag on the page, okay? And then we use the contains function to find any that has an href attribute that contains epi.net. So that looks pretty good for a start, right? But this fails to take into account case sensitivity. Now we're lucky because XPath uh, knows that that could be a problem. So they give us the translate function and that looks like this hot mess, right? So we can put all the capital letters there, then all the lowercase letters and we can convert everything into the same case for the attribute that we want to analyze. Right? So if they want to capitalize parts of my name, it doesn't make a difference. I'm still going to find that they link to my site. The second problem here, the canonicalization, uh, we're going to need to combine attribute selectors, but I've got a different uh, one that's going to show us how to do that. Okay, so how can you use this in your job? Okay. If you have a list of people who should be linking to you, you could easily scrape their sites to find out if they're not. And if they're not, then you can reach out to them and try to get a link. Right? What if you uh, want to thwart link decay? Right? Sometimes our links don't live forever. So if you have uh, a list of links, you could scrape those on a regular basis and get notified whenever your link disappears. Right? So then you can do some timely outreach at that point in time. Maybe you could save that link. Okay? Maybe the link isn't being removed on purpose. Maybe somebody just didn't update their credit card or uh, they let a domain expire that they didn't want anymore. Well, when that happens, you'll know. Right? That link goes away. You can see that it wasn't intentional. It wasn't, you didn't do anything wrong. Right? But that domain just expired. You could pick that up now. You could rebuild it. You could sneak your links in there a little more. Okay? So it's a little underhanded, a little dirty, but, uh, but you could make that happen. And finally, you can actually integrate this into your link outreach process too. So if you want notification when a link goes live, right? you're doing outreach, you're trying to get, get links built, you've got your list of prospects, you'll get a notification whenever it goes up, even if they don't get back to you. All right, so more next level XPathing. Uh, we want to find every external link from CNN, okay? In order to do this, we're going to have to combine attribute selectors in one XPath query so that we can target useful information. So the things we know, we know that external links all contain HTTP colon slash slash or HTTPS, but we're not going to worry about that right now. Uh, we also know that internal links can contain that, right? They could be absolute links instead of relative. So we're going to need to exclude any of the links that include HTTP, colon, slash, slash, but point to the current domain that we're scraping. Okay? This is what that looks like. So we can combine stuff. So this says, get me all of the links that contain HTTP, colon, slash, slash in the href attribute, but don't contain CNN.com in that same href attribute. Okay? How can you use this? you could identify if a page is too spammed out for you to even bother with link outreach, okay? They have way too many external links to, to even merit uh, messing around with, okay? You could pull a list of sites that are being linked to by a, uh, a really good target, and then you could figure out the commonalities between those sites. You could also find expired or expiring domains that are being linked to from authority sites, so uh, maybe your DMOS section, right? A lot of those sites are ancient, 
those domains are probably going to expire at some point in time. So you can swoop in, pick those up, and redirect them or drop your links in there. And then you can also use it for dead link building automation or broken link building automation. Uh, you can run this through. You can get all the external links, and then you can, uh, you can curl those in via PHP. It's a little, a little bit complicated, but we'll get to that a little later. All right, use case three. Uh, this is uh, a pretty awesome one, I think. Uh, if you know who I am, this is probably why, because this is what caused me to build a tool called Link Detective that's um, thankfully gotten a fair amount of publicity lately. So how are they ranking? What kind of links do they have? All right, so this is going to get real deep in the nerd pool. Um, XPath offers what's called an ancestor axis, and that lets us leverage information to identify other stuff, right? So in this case, we're going to use semantic markup to ID link types. So the things we know, web standards, you know, those are being implemented more frequently. Modern CMSs use web standards. And along those lines, they're implementing semantic markup. So semantic markup means that the code has meaning. So the final thing here that we know is that a link that exists inside of an element with an ID or a class name, like comment or blog roll or footer, is pretty suggestive of its type, right? So we can do something like this, nasty piece of mess, which says, find me all of the links to Rand's blog, and then find any of the ancestor elements, so anything that's contained uh, by that element, and then find the ID or class name and see if it says comment. And that'll let us know if Rand was comment spamming his way to the top of the SERPs. Um, we probably don't need to run this query to know that, but you know, we could. So why you might use this? You can use this to analyze your competitor's tactics for acquiring links, right? So how did they get to number one? I wanna, I'll do the same things, right? That's a pretty awesome approach. We can find out, uh, isolate their links. So in OSE, we can export only the ones that have good anchor text and see if they're using a different strategy for link building to get good anchor text. And uh, we can also use this to improve our workflow. So if we don't want to look through a gigantic mess of links, we can filter out all the stuff that's garbage, that's easy to get, blog comments, directory submissions, all that sort of stuff, and only focus on those really good earned links. All right, use case four. I've scraped some data, and now I need to extract something important that's in there that XPath can't get to. It happens. Uh, as awesome as XPath is, it won't get you everything. In those cases, regular expressions can come to the rescue. So we're going to be in Google Docs for this, and um, we're going to try to pattern match uh, the structured text. In this case, it's going to be Twitter mentions so that we can stalk Will Reynolds. Um, so. So everybody that Will follows, those are people he probably cares about, but the people Will mentions are the ones that he might respect more, right? So we're going we're gonna to see if we can scrape everybody that Will mentions, become friends with them, uh, make them think that we're amazing, and then they will mention us in his Twitter timeline, and, uh, and then we're going to profit. So I might have left out a few steps, but you can fill in the blanks. So in Google Docs, here's, here's how we do that, okay? So we've got some text that has Twitter mentions in it. Uh, I've created my own function called extract Twitter names. You can guess what it does. And then we go into Google Docs script editor and we can create our own function that matches whatever we put in that cell, okay? Now we passed in a cell value, so that gets passed in here, and then we can create a regular expression and evaluate against it. I don't have time to walk you through the whole thing, but trust me, this is going to pull Twitter usernames. And here's what it looks like. That's Ethan Lyon and me, awesome. Um, so we pulled those, and they're in a, uh, adjacent cells to whatever contains all of the text that we're evaluating against. And here's what that regular expression looks like. Again, just trust me on this. That's going to pull only Twitter names, and it's not going to grab email addresses. Okay? All right, why would you use this? You can use this to pull contact information from anything. That's very structured data. Okay, so an at sign and then some letters. Uh, some letters, an at sign, some letters, a dot, some letters, right? That's, that's an email address. Phone numbers are structured. Uh, even addresses are structured. So there's a lot of stuff that we can pull there. All right, moving beyond the spreadsheet. Uh, I want to chain processes together so I can process lots of data or allow multiple users to leverage what I build. Or I want this stuff to run while I'm sleeping so that I don't have to go into Google Docs and make it happen all the time. Well, that's where you're going to have to step outside the spreadsheet to build more complex systems. Um, that's what I did with Link Detective. So this is a quick overview on PHP scraping, right? You're going to pull a page in. You'll do that via curl. Uh, you're going to convert it into a document object model object. That's a little crazy for some of you guys. 
run XPath queries against it, and then you could do whatever you want with the data, the findings that you have. Now, this might seem a little bit intimidating to you. Um, I certainly understand that. But I've made it a little easier for you. So if uh, when you leave here tonight or while you're hanging out here, if you want to check out scrapeeverything.com, that's going to take you to a blog post that I posted today that includes a PHP class that you can use to start your own scraping. And it has a nice example on there, too. So um, show me some love. I'm Epi Voigt. I work for JPL Creative. And uh, I would love it if you would tweet if you enjoyed this presentation. And please, when you do so, mention my employer so that they let me do this more. Thanks. <laughs>